Somewhere, hidden amongst thorny brambles, is a little kingdom of elves and fairies. Everyone who lives here is very, very small. I'm Ben Elf. <coughs> and I'm Princess Holly. <laughs> Come on, let's play. Wait for us. <laughs> And Holly's Little Kingdom. Today's adventure starts at the lake. Redbeard's Rainbow. Hello, Redbeard. Ahoy there, Ben and Holly. Are you ready for a day of adventure? Yes, we are. Nanny Plum, me lovely fairy maiden. Are you coming too? Oh, if I must. Ha-ha! <laughs> a fine sunny day such as this is just right for adventure. It started to rain. No adventure today, Mr Pirate. A rainy day such as this is just right for adventure. Look, there's a rainbow. Ooh! And a rainbow is a pirate's best friend. Why is that? What do you find at the end of a rainbow? A pot of gold! And pirates love gold! Oh, pots of gold at the end of rainbows? That's just a fairy story! Well, you're a fairy, aren't you? Uh, yes, but... Come on, then! Make ready to sail! Ben, you can be cabin boy! Aye, aye, Captain! Polly can be lookout! Aye, aye, Captain! Polly Parrot can be the ship's parrot. Ah, he's a mate. What about Gaston? Uh, he can be the ship's cat. <laughs> uh, cats don't normally bark, do they? Well, no. Gaston, can you say meow? <laughs> Sounds like a meow to me. Hop aboard, Gaston. <laughs> and Nanny Plum can be... Oh, wait a moment. What is it? You're a woman. Yes. Sailors say it's bad luck to have a woman on board. Bad luck to have a woman on board? How can you say such a thing in this day and age? You're right. It's probably a lot of old sailors' nonsense. Welcome aboard. What's my job, then? You just stand there and look pretty. Huh! Now, let's set sail for the end of the rainbow and find that pot of gold. Hurrah! 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 Yeah, hurrah. Big clouds ahead. I can't see the rainbow anymore. Just keep heading for where it was. That's thunder. A storm? Oh, dear. Can we go home now? Go home? The adventure's just beginning. Ah, he's in the night. Ooh. Ooh. How do you stay still, Redbeard? You just need to get your sea legs, that's all. It's a good job none of you get seasick. Oh, my tummy. Nanny Plum, you've gone green. Oh, oh, oh. Ah! Man overboard! Oh, sorry, I mean woman overboard! Well... Catch hold of this life belt! <laughs> oh, I fell in the sea. It was horrible. Perhaps those sailors were right. It is bad luck having a woman on board. Bad luck for the woman. I just want to get off this rocking boat and onto solid ground. Land ahoy! Straight ahead! Ah, a little island. Ah, oh, it's so nice to stand on something that isn't moving. Redbeard, do islands normally have fins? Not as a rule, no. What about eyes? Hardly ever. It's lovely being on dry land. Uh, I think you should come back now. No, I want to stay here. Pick me up on the way home. Nanny Plum, hurry! I'm not leaving this island. I wouldn't exactly call that an island. Why not? Because it's a fish and a whopping big one. It's Big Bad Murray. Ah, help me! Don't 
worry. You're in no danger as long as he doesn't think you're food. Like a fly or something. Ah! Nanny does look like a fly. Ah! I'm not a fly! I'm not a fly! Ah! Get away! Don't let Barry catch you! Help! Don't flap your wings so much, Nanny! Fly faster, Nanny! Oh, Nanny, don't look so like a fly, will you? She looks a bit like a worm on a hook. Ooh, fish like eating worms. I'm not a worm. I'm not a worm. Whoops. Maybe it wasn't such a good idea to use a fishing rod. Ah, 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 ah. Hang on, Danny. I'm pulling you in. Ah. And how's me sweet darling? Not having a very good day, are you? Not having a good day? Not having a good day? A fish does try to eat me! Yep, those sailors were definitely right about the woman on board bad luck stuff. Bug! Coming towards us! Fog? That's bad. Can we go home now? No, we've got more adventuring to do. I can see lights. It looks like another ship. Why, blow me down! That'd be the ship of my friend, Captain Squid! Ahoy there, Captain Squid! Funny, there's no one on deck. It's very quiet. Hello! Hello! Anyone home? Look, there's a meal on the table. It's still hot, but there's no one here. Meal on the table, but the boat's empty. This is certainly a mystery. Ooh. No one will never, ever know what happened to poor old Captain Squid. A mystery that will never be solved. Here's a note. Gone to bury treasure. Back in five minutes. Oh, that solves it then. So, where do you think Captain Squid is? Hmm, where would you bury treasure around here? The end of the rainbow! The pot of gold at the end of the rainbow! That'll be the gold Captain Squid's burying! Come on, let's get after him! It's not getting any closer. That's the thing about rainbows. When you walk towards them, they go further away. We're not going to walk there. We're going to fly. Fly? But you're an elf. You don't have any wings. Yes, but I'm an elf with a parrot. Ah! He's a tonight! Saddle up, shipmates. There's the pot of gold. And there be Captain Squid, burying treasure. Redbeard, this is my treasure, not yours. How did you find me? We just followed the rainbow. Ah, rainbows. They're a pirate's worst enemy. No, they're not. Rainbows are a pirate's best friend. Depends whether you're burying treasure or finding it. Good point. So, anyway, don't let us stop you, Captain Squid. You get back to burying your treasure. Thank you kindly, Redbeard. I was just about to bury it here. Hang on. You can't trick me that easily. No one must see where I bury my treasure. You've all got to close your eyes. Thank you. OK, you can look now. So, where did you bury it? Why, it's right over there. Ha, <laughs> ha. You're trying to trick me again. Oh, you won't get it out of me that easy. The rainbow's moving. It's gone to the treasure. Ah, blasted rainbows. Don't worry, Captain Squid. We won't dig it up, will we, Redbeard? No, of course not. Is it home time yet? Yes, I think it is. Today's adventure is over. And I'd be honoured to take you all home on my yacht. That sounds a nice way to travel. Yacht? That's a rowing boat. Plenty of room if we all squeeze up. <laughs> Where can I sit? Wait a minute. Are you 
a woman. Yes? Oh, bad luck having a woman on board. It's all right. Turns out it's bad luck for the woman, not for us. Oh, in that case, welcome aboard, me lovely. Oh, no! It's rocking worse than Redbeard's boat. Fun, isn't it? Yes! That's what being an elf pirate is all about. Having fun. <laughs> By the way, none of you get seasick, do you? Somewhere hidden amongst thorny brambles is a little kingdom of elves and fairies. Everyone who lives here is very, very small. I'm Ben Elf. And I'm Princess Holly. Holly's Little Kingdom. Today's adventure starts at the Little Castle. Journey to the centre of the earth. Hello, Mrs. Fothering Girl. Have you come to teach Daisy and Poppy? Yes, Nanny Plum. And this time, I am not going to let Daisy and Poppy get the better of me. That's the spirit. She's doomed. Mrs. Fotheringill is here to give the twins their lesson. Are you sure you really want to do that, Mrs. Fotheringill? We'd quite understand if you... Oh, no, I have thought long and hard about it. And what happened last time was not the twins' fault. It was my fault. But the twins zapped you to the South Pole. Only because I didn't give the little darlings enough trust. If you trust a child, they will repay your trust. <laughs> now, Daisy and Poppy, let's start this lesson as we mean to go on. Ah! Let's just open our picture books and... Ah! Yeah! What are they doing to her up there? The last time she taught the twins, they made her disappear. All they found was her shoes. Disappear! Now, Daisy, I know the deep down you're good and you'd never make me disappear. Disappear. <laughs> ah, good. They've gone quiet. Quiet isn't good. It means they're up to something. I hope Mrs. Fotheringill is all right. <gasps> all that's left of her is her shoes. <laughs> Daisy, Poppy, where is Mrs. Fotheringill? Gone. All gone. Gone? My goodness! The twins are so wild and naughty. Where do they get it from? Grandpapa Thistle is here. There's your answer. Hello, everyone. Hello, Dad. Grandpapa! 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 Papa. <laughs> Hello, my dears. I was just passing and I asked myself, why don't I take my grandchildren for a day out? Hooray! Hang on, Dad. Where were you thinking of taking the children? I thought we'd visit a volcano. Um, I don't think climbing up a volcano is such a good idea. We're not going to climb up it. Oh, good. We're climbing down inside it. What? You can't take children into a volcano. It's too dangerous. Is it? All right, then. How about lion taming? No. What's wrong with a nice walk in the meadow? I bet the twins would like to go down a volcano. Yes, Grandpapa. The twins are in disgrace today. They have been very, very naughty. Ah, what have the little darlings done? They've only made their teacher disappear. Oh, that nice Mrs. Fotheringill. Gone. All gone. Daisy, Poppy, where have you sent your teacher? Down. Down to the kitchen? Down, down. Down to the cellar? Very down. You know what? I think Daisy and Poppy have sent Mrs. Fotheringill to the centre of the earth. Centre of the <laughs> We have to rescue her. Well, that's settled where we're going for our day out then. 
to the center of the earth. I saw the film of Journey to the Center of the Earth. There were dinosaurs and lost tribes and everything. Dinosaurs in the center of the earth? What nonsense. It's true. I saw it on the telly. How do we get to the center of the earth? We could just take the stairs. Stairs? Yes. There are secret stairs in the little castle that go down, down, down. Ooh. The stairs start from a secret entrance in the kitchen. We just have to press this large button. Oh, I've always wondered what that button was for. I built these stairs when I built the little castle. I asked myself, why have stairs only to the cellar? Why not to the centre of the earth? You're a bit crazy, aren't you? I'm not crazy. I'm completely bonkers. Look, there's some writing on the wall. It's runic writing written by dwarves. What does it say? Nanny, can you translate it? Hmm. It says, take these stairs down to the centre of the earth. At the bottom, you'll see dinosaurs. Does it really say dinosaurs? No, I made that bit up. But there will be dinosaurs. You'll see. <sighs> Are we nearly there yet? No, Holly. We have to go past the roots of the plants, the drains. The giant spider caves. It's a long way to the centre of the Earth. So how many steps do we have to go down? 48 million trillion thousand. Oh, no. My feet are tired already. That's why I got the dwarves to put a lift in. Doors opening. Hold tight, everyone. The lift does go rather fast. Doors closing. Going down. Oh, my tummy! This is fun! Brilliant! Center of the Earth. Doors opening. Here we are, the center of the Earth. It's a huge cave. It's full of trees and giant mushrooms. Yep, that's how it was on telly. Well, one thing that's not here, dinosaurs. <laughs> There's one. Oh. See? The telly is always right. But now that we're here, how do we find Mrs Fotheringill? Gaston can sniff Mrs Fotheringill's shoes and find her. Brilliant, Ben. <laughs> find Mrs Fotheringill. <laughs> Good boy, Gaston. <laughs> I wonder where we'll find the lost tribe. Lost tribe? What nonsense. Whoa! Look at that! A lost tribe! Told you. They're elves and fairies, just like us. Halt! Who journeys through our land? We come from the surface of the mighty Earth. We welcome you, surface dwellers. We thank you, O oh Lord of the Underground. Nanny, why are they speaking in that funny way? That's how they speak on telly. We bid you greetings. Uh, actually, we've come to get Mrs Fotheringill. Ah, the one we call teacher. Yes, that'll be her. Good morning, children. My name is Mrs Fotheringill. Hello, Mrs Fotheringill. Oh, hello, everybody. We're here to rescue you. And we've brought your shoes. Oh, my shoes. It's good to have them back. It's been very nice and peaceful down here. A bit like a holiday. But I will be glad to be back in my own little home. Fothergill! Fothergill! Ah, Daisy! Poppy! Uh, on the other hand, I think I'll stay here. Young lady, do you want to be rescued or not? Oh, I don't know. It's so hard to decide. I'll make it easy for you. Yes? As queen, I command you to come back. Oh, well, in that case... Right. Mission accomplished. Let's go home. Back to the lift, everyone. Oh, no. Not that horrid lift again. My poor tummy. There is another way up. We can go by balloon. <laughs> Just need a basket. Abracadabra. All 
aboard. Goodbye, people of the underground. We bid you farewell, surface dwellers. See ya. Ah, oh, floating gently up in a balloon sounds lovely and relaxing. It certainly will be lovely and relaxing. If you can call hurtling through a volcano relaxing. Volcano? Of course. The volcano will take us straight up to the surface. Dad, I said no volcanoes. Oh, we'll be fine, as long as the volcano doesn't erupt. Whoops, seems to be erupting. Oh, well, here we go. Next stop, the little castle. Now, Daisy and Poppy say sorry to Mrs. Fotheringill for causing her so much trouble. Sorry! And do you promise to be good next time I teach you? We promise. Oh, they are sweet, really, aren't they? She never learns. She's doomed. <laughs> Somewhere, hidden amongst thorny brambles, is a little kingdom of elves and fairies. Everyone who lives here is very, very small. I'm Ben Elf. <coughs> and I'm Princess Holly. <laughs> Come on, let's play. Wait for us. <laughs> Holly's Little Kingdom. Today's adventure starts at Mrs. Witch's house. The Witch Competition. Thank you for helping tidy my house, Nanny Plum. No problem, Mrs. Witch. My goodness, what a lot of cobwebs. Let's magic them away. Lovely. I don't know what I'd do without you, Nanny. But, Mrs Witch, why can't you just use your own magic to tidy your house? The thing is, I don't do much magic these days. I'm retired. Meow. Still got your mangy old cat, I see. Don't be rude about Moggy. I say cat, but it's just a bag of fleas, really. Leave him alone. I'm warning you. And he's smelly. <laughs> <gasps> Mrs Witch, you've turned Nanny to stone So you can do magic Only if I'm cross Nanny was being very rude about my cat Can you turn Nanny back? If she says sorry Sorry And say mm. sorry to Moggy Sorry, Moggy <laughs> Oof, I forgot she's so touchy about her cat Hello, are you Mrs Witch? That's me. I'm Wendy Witch. Hello, Wendy Witch. I'm so excited to be standing here with you. You're famous. Am I? I was brought up on stories of you doing the fastest spells in the West. That was all a long time ago. I'm retired now. And what a lovely witchy house. I can't believe I'll be living here. Uh, what was that? I'll be living in your house. But there's only room in this house for one witch. Yes. Now you're retired, you'll be going to the old witch's home. You'll be very happy there. It's full of other old witches watching telly all day. Uh, you know, when I said I was retired, I meant I'm not retired. Goodbye. <laughs> that was close. Um, sorry to bother you again, but since there's only room for one witch around here, we'll have a witch competition. The winner stays, the loser goes. Oh, yes, of course. A witch competition needs a judge. Someone important. Uh, my daddy is a king. Is that important enough? A king will do nicely. Let's go and meet this daddy of yours. Hello, Your Majesty. Ah! I'm Wendy Witch. Oh, hello, Wendy Witch. We're having a witch competition and we need someone important and wise to be the judge. That'll be me. 
I'm very important and wise. If Mrs Witch loses, she'll have to leave her house. Daddy, you have to make sure Mrs Witch wins. I'm sorry, Holly, but I'm the judge and I have to be fair and above board. I suppose there's a first time for everything. When does the competition start? At high noon. I haven't got a chance against Wendy Witch. I haven't been in a witch competition for years. What happens in a witch competition? There's a spell contest, broomstick riding and jam making. Well, your jam smells quite nice. See, I've lost my touch. Which jam is supposed to be horrible? Don't worry, we'll help you make it horrible. <laughs> what if you put in some snail slime? Snail slime? Yes, that could do it. And some worm poo? Yes, that would make it taste awful. You see, you can win. Now let's tackle the broomstick riding. I haven't ridden my broom in years. It's forgotten all its training. <laughs> yeah, boy. Good broom. Oh, come here, you silly old stick. <laughs> oh, dear. Let's try spells. Mrs Witch, you did the fastest spells in the West. Right, Mrs Witch. Turn these cans into frogs. <laughs> I'm trying. But I can't do it. I'm afraid she's past it. Past it? She can't even turn a can into a frog. She might have been good at magic once, but now she's a bit of a has-been. Has-been? I'll show you. <gasps> Mrs Witch, you turned Nanny into a frog. That's because Nanny got me annoyed. <laughs> Oof. If you can do magic like that in the competition, you'll be fine. So just remember to get cross with Wendy Witch. But she's so friendly and nice. It's your only chance to win. OK, I'll try to be cross. It's high noon. Let the witch competition begin. First, jam making. Why are they all staring at me? You're the judge, darling. They're waiting for you to taste the witch's jam. Oh, what's in it? Slug, mostly, with a hint of bat and spider eggs for crunch. Ew! That's the most disgusting thing I've ever tasted. Thank you. Now, my jam, Your Majesty. Yes. Um, why should I have all the fun? Isn't it someone else's go? Daddy, you're the judge, so you must taste both jams. Of course I must. Lucky me. Oh, they both taste equally revolting. So, the jam making is a draw. And now, broomstick flying! Yeehaw! That was really good! Ooh. Now it's Mrs Witch's turn! <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Right! She's held on! Yeehaw! She's riding the broom brilliantly! The broomstick riding a draw. Now for the spell contest. Mrs. Witch, where are you going? To the old witch's home. I can't win a spell contest. Yes, you can. You turned Nanny to stone. And you turned her into a frog. Well, Nanny Plum makes me so cross. Just remember to be cross with Wendy Witch. But she's so polite and charming. She wants to put you in the old witch's home. And live in your house. You're right. Remember I'm cross. Remember I'm cross. Let the, Let the spells, spells begin. begin. The witch, the that, witch turns that turns the other, the other to, stone to stone is the is winner. The winner. <laughs> remember I'm cross. Remember, I'm cross. 
Mrs. Witch, it's been such a thrill to be in a competition with you. Remember, I'm... Oh, thank you, dear. You're so nice. <gasps> She's turned Mrs. Witch to stone. That's it. I've won. I'll be the Little Kingdom's witch. I'll really enjoy working with you, King Thistle. Uh, working with me? Oh, yes. I've got big plans for the Little Kingdom. Oh, dear. She sounds like a bit of a bossy boots. Meow. And Mrs. Witch's mangy old cat will have to go. Did you see Mrs. Witch move? She can't move. She's been turned to stone. He really is a flea-bitten old thing. He smells awful. I'm really cross. You leave my moggy alone. Wow, Mrs. Witch turned the other witch to stone. So, I suppose Mrs. Witch is the winner. We knew you could do it. Uh, shouldn't you turn Wendy Witch back now? She was very rude about my Moggy. But if she says sorry... Sorry. And sorry to Moggy. Sorry, Moggy. <sighs> Thanks. You're just amazing, Mrs. Witch. I've never seen anyone break out of a stone spell before. And you're a very polite and clever young witch, mostly. Well, as they say, this town ain't big enough for the both of us. So I'll be moving along. Bye! I'm glad Mrs. Witch won. The Little Kingdom wouldn't be the same without Mrs. Witch. Yes. Mind you, Wendy Witch did have a point about the cat. It does rather smell and it's... What was that? It, uh, is a most lovely pussycat. Thank you, King Thistle. I do love my Moggy. Meow. Somewhere, hidden amongst thorny brambles, is a little kingdom of elves and fairies. Everyone who lives here is very, very small. I'm Ben Elf. <coughs> and I'm Princess Holly. <coughs> Come on, let's play. Wait for us. <laughs> And Holly's Little Kingdom. Today's adventure starts at Mrs. Fig's Magic School. The Queen Bakes Cakes. Hello, Mrs. Fig. Lovely autumn day, isn't it? Um, yes, wise old elf. Only problem is the apples are starting to fall. Wow, that was close. So far, I've been lucky. They've all missed my magic school. Oh, that one didn't miss. Oh, dear. My poor magic school. Broken. Well, you're a fairy. Can't you just mend it with magic? No. Magic always leads to trouble. You don't like magic, do you, Mrs Fig? That's right, Holly. I want to mend the school the normal, sensible, safe way by using a builder. Well, you're in luck. I'm a builder, but it won't be cheap. We're going to need bricks, cement, roof tiles. I know. We'll have a cake stall. The money we make from selling cakes will pay for the repairs. A cake stall? It sounds fun. Let's tell everyone to get baking. Daddy! Daddy! An apple fell on Mrs Fig's magic school. And now the school has a big hole in it. Oh, dear. That's a shame. Mrs Fig is asking everybody to bake cakes to raise money. Bake cakes? Uh, well, don't tell your mother about that. About what, darling? Mrs Fig is running a cake stall. Oh, how exciting. I'll bake some cakes. R really? There's no need. Mrs Fig needs them today. Then I'd better start straight away. Oh, no. What is it, Daddy? Your mother is not very good at baking cakes. Oh. She bakes horrible cakes and she gets very upset if anyone doesn't like them. dum de dum de dee dee doo That's odd. Who's in my kitchen? <gasps> the Queen baking cakes! Yes, 
Nanny Plum. Would you like to try a cake? Maybe later. Cakes! Cakes! The Queen's baking cakes! I know! We'll have to leave the country. Pack a bag, everyone. The Queen's cakes can't be that bad. They're worse than bad. They're... Cake time! Who wants to try my lovely cakes? Uh, um, 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 uh, I've got rock cakes, fudge cake and gingerbread. They look lovely. In fact, they look too good to eat. You don't want to eat them, do you? You think they're horrid. No, no, no. I can't wait to try them. Have a rock cake. Ow! Did you just say ow? No, I said ow. Oh. Is it nice? It's inedible. I, I mean, incredible. But maybe I'll save it for later. Try the fudge cake. Ah, uh, isn't it someone else's turn? Don't you want my fudge cake? Of course I do. What do you think? <coughs> Tasty? <coughs> Are you all right, Daddy? <coughs> What's he saying? I'm saying... <coughs> I think his mouth is stuck shut. Oh, that was horrific. You think the fudge cake is too sticky, don't you? You hate it. No, no, of course not, darling. It's uh, amazing. Oh, good. Try the gingerbread. Dunk it in your coffee. That will make it all soft and yummy. Um, the coffee's just rolled off it. It's completely dry. Take a bite. You know, maybe I'll save this one for later, too. OK, well, I can't stand around chatting. I've got loads more cakes to bake. Rock hard rock cakes, super sticky fudge, waterproof gingerbread. We'll have to warn the whole of the little kingdom. The Queen's baking cakes. <laughs> Baking cakes! Oh, no! I can't eat one of those cakes again. No one can eat them and survive. Hello! Cake time, everyone! Uh, yes, but you shouldn't have troubled yourself, Your Majesty. We already have lots of cake. You don't want my cakes? Oh, yes, we do. You think they're horrible, don't you? Of course we don't. Oh, Good, then. I'll put them here. That should raise lots of money to mend your school, Mrs Fig. Thank you, Your Majesty. Maybe I should have used magic to mend the school. It would have been less dangerous. Keep clear of the cakes. No one eat them. Ooh, cakes. Wait! Yow! What kind of a cake is that? It's a rock cake. Queen Thistle baked it. Oh, the Queen baking again. The fudge cake glues your mouth shut. And the gingerbread is waterproof. Incredible. What can these things be made of? I want to do some tests on these cakes. This machine tests how strong things are. Let's start with something very weak, like this egg. The egg had a strength of one. Now let's try a brick. The brick had a strength of five. Now let's try the Queen's rock cake. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's reached eleven. Eleven? Nothing has gone to eleven before. Stand up, everyone. <gasps> the cake broke the machine. That cake is the strongest substance known to man. The fudge cake stuck Daddy's mouth shut. Hmm, let's test how sticky it really is. Stop, wise old elf! Don't touch the fudge cake! You'll be stuck to it forever! OK, let's just say the Queen has created the stickiest substance known to man. What about the gingerbread? Daddy dipped it in his coffee and it stayed dry. 
Let's see how waterproof it is. Amazing! The most waterproof substance known to man. These cakes must be locked away. They must never be eaten. Not eaten, no. But maybe they can be used for something else. I do hope I've made enough cakes. What if they need more for the cake stall? Trust me, they won't want any more cake. More cake, please. Really? Yes, as many as you can bake. And fudge cake. And gingerbread. Oh, goody. They love my cakes. I'd better get baking. Who's eating all these cakes? Eating them? No one's eating them. So why do you want more? These cakes are the perfect building material. The rock cakes are super strong bricks. We're gluing them together using the super sticky fudge cake. And then the super waterproof gingerbread makes great roof tiles. Amazing! But of course, you must never tell the Queen. Never tell the Queen what? Uh... Oh, Mrs Fig, you've mended the school. So you managed to raise enough money by selling my cakes. Um, let's just say your cakes were a great help. Yes, three cheers for Queen Thistle. Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, Hang on. These bricks look just like my rock cakes. Uh, yes. And this cement is just like my fudge cake. It is my fudge cake. Oh, no! At least she hasn't spotted the roof. And the roof tiles are my gingerbread. You didn't want to eat my cakes. Well, they're not really for eating, are they, darling? Not if you want to survive. I thought everybody liked my cakes, but nobody did. I wish I'd never baked a single cake. <laughs> But, Mummy, if we hadn't baked any cakes, we wouldn't have mended the school. Holly is right. It's only because of your baking the magic school is fixed. I suppose that's true. Hooray for Queen Thistle! Hooray! In fact, we could do with some cakes to finish the chimney, if you don't mind baking some more. Could you make some bricks for my house? I want to build a patio. Do you do paving slabs? Well, I suppose I could. Do you do drain pipes? Do you do MDF? Everyone loves my mummy's cakes. Somewhere, hidden amongst thorny brambles, is a little kingdom of elves and fairies. Everyone who lives here is very, very small. I'm Ben Elf. And I'm Princess Holly. <laughs> Come on, let's play. Wait for us. <laughs> ben and Holly's Little Kingdom. Today's adventure starts at the little castle. Planet Bong. Wow, a flying saucer. Hello, Holly. It is I, Zyros, from Planet Bong. Oh, hello, Zyros. Nice to see you again. What's all this noise? Is it an alien invasion? No, it's our friend Zyros from Planet Bong. We have come for help from the Wise One. The Wise One? That must be me. No, dear. I think he means the wise old elf. Oh, yes. Smarty Pants. He lives at the Great Elf Tree over there. Thank you. We will go and look for Smarty Pants. <laughs> Cyrus, the alien. Hello. Hello, Elf Ben. We are looking for the one they call Smarty Pants. He must mean the wise old elf. Did someone say my name? Goodness me, alien. <gasps> we need your help, Smarty Pants. Well, of course. Anything I can do. Is it true you can solve any problem? Yes, I can solve any problem. Good. We have a big problem. 
Once upon a time, our home planet was a wonderful planet. It was covered in plants and all was good. There was everything we needed and we were surrounded by beautiful flowers. We worked happily in our factories and everything was fine. It sounds very nice. Yes, it was. But now it is very hot and the plants do not grow anymore. Oh, that's a shame. So we want you to bring all the plants back to life and make Planet Bong nice again like it was before. Uh, that sounds a bit difficult. But can't you use your magic? Magic? Elves don't do magic. And I'm an elf. So, you cannot help us. You are not Smarty Pants. Yes, I am Smarty Pants. And I will save your planet with uh, b b magic. But wise old elf, elves don't do magic. Shh, don't worry about it, Ben. Good. We go now. This will be an elf expedition to save Planet Bong. Uh, I'll just need to stop on the way to collect a friend. For goodness sake, what is it now? We have found Smarty Pants. Here I am. How do I get down? Is there a ladder? I am afraid we do not have this ladder you speak of. Merely a primitive tronic beam. Ooh. Cool. But what do you want? It's the middle of the night. We're going to Planet Bong. It's very hot there. Ah, a holiday. I love holidays. I'll come too. Holiday, holiday. Yes, and I have a job to do there, which may require the services of a fairy helper. I can help. I'm good at helping. I need a sensible fairy. That's me! A fairy who does magic in a responsible, grown-up way. It's almost like you've said my name. Oh, very well. If we're going on holiday, we'll need to pack some things. No, no, no! It's not a holiday. Whatever. Let's see. What do we need for a holiday? Swimming costumes and towels? We'll need sunscreen. Sunscreen. Buckets and spades. Buckets and spades. Picnic basket. Beach ball. First aid kit. Cooker. Deck chairs. She's bringing everything but the kitchen sink. Oh, I nearly forgot. Thank you, wise old elf. Kitchen sink. Wow, you got all that into your bag. Yes, it's my magic bag. All aboard. Come. Um, it's not really a holiday. We must leave. Hold tight, everyone. It can be bumpy. What do you mean, bumpy? <laughs> ah! What's happening? Why are we floating? There is no gravity in space. Nothing to hold you down. Sorry, I forgot to turn on the ship's gravity motor. Ooh. Ooh. Ow. <gasps> Look at all the pretty sparkly lights! Behold! The wondrous science of an alien race! Where's the toilet? We do not go to the toilet! Incredible! Being so advanced, they have stopped needing to go to the toilet! No toilet? What if I want to go? You should have gone before we set off. Maybe there'll be toilets at the beach. Is there a beach on Planet Bong? Planet Bong is all beach. Wow! All beach! Yes, it is very hot and sunny. Would anyone like a snack? Yes, please. This machine can make any food or drink you like. Can it make orange juice? Yes. Mmm, delicious. Can it make a jam and peanut butter and banana sandwich? Yes. Amazing. Can it make jam? 
jelly? No, it can make anything in the universe, but not jelly. Which is a shame, because I like jelly. Jelly? I can do jelly. Nanny! What? A little bit of jelly never did anyone any harm. Magic jelly, please. Oh, it is a bit small. I would like lots of jelly. OK. Magic jelly. Lots, lots, lots! Ah! Jelly plant! <laughs> a jelly flood inside a pressurised spacecraft. Nanny, you have surpassed yourself. Thank you, wise old elf. Mmm, <laughs> magic jelly is very tasty. <laughs> <gasps> what was that? We're slowing down. The engine is stopped. Why? I'll tell you why. It's full of magic jelly. Oh. Drifting in deep space. We're stuck here forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. We are not stuck here forever. Aren't we? No. We have Smarty Pants. He can fix the engine. Well, uh... uh... I will open the engine. <laughs> Now, Smarty Pants will go outside and fix the engine. Uh, I'd love to, but I can't go outside. I don't have a spacesuit. A spacesuit? Oh, hang on. I think I packed one in my magic bag. Here you are. Uh, thank you, Nanny. Hmm, <laughs> this looks a bit like plumbing. Elves are good at plumbing, and I'm an elf. <laughs> oh. Hello there. What are you doing here? I'm the fairy helper, remember? Well, don't touch anything. This is advanced alien technology capable of travelling across the universe at the speed of light. Although, it is very like plumbing. Maybe if I give it a kick. <laughs> Why don't you just give it a push? Give it a push? This technological miracle? You just gave it a kick. Oh, uh, OK. Let's give it a push. It's just like getting a car to start. OK, Mr Zyros, give it a bit of gas. OK. Push! <laughs> Nothing. More gas. OK. Whoa! It worked! They went off like a, a rocket. Next stop, Planet Bomb. Hey! Hey, come back! They've left us! That's outrageous! Help! 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 Will Nanny Plum and the wise old elf be lost in space forever? Find out next time in Planet Bong, Episode 2. Somewhere hidden amongst thorny brambles is a little kingdom of elves and fairies. Everyone who lives here is very, very small. I'm Ben Elf. <laughs> and I'm Princess Holly. Holly's Little Kingdom. Planet Bong, Episode 2. How? How? We're lost in deep space. I can't believe they just left us behind. I hope they turn the spaceship around and come back for us. Yes, otherwise we'll be floating here together for all eternity. How long is eternity? A very, very long time. Oh, well, let's play a game while we're waiting. I spy with my little eye something beginning with S. Stars. Yes, you're good at this. Can I have another go? If you must. I spy with my little eye something beginning with, um, S. 
Stars. No, space. Ha! You see, this is a really good game. This is going to be a very long eternity. Holiday, here we come. Soon, we will be at Planet Bong. But what about the wise old elf and nanny? Oh, we left them behind. Well, it was nice knowing them. No, Daddy. We have to go back for them. Yes, without smarty pants, we cannot make Planet Bong beautiful again. Stars? No. Space? No. Oh, all right. It was stars. Can I have another go? No. Oh. Wise old elf! Nanny! Saved! We're saved! Saved from an eternity of I Spy. Oh, don't worry. We can carry on on board. There's loads of things. Spaceship. Uh, space suit. Oh. Smarty pants. When we get to Planet Bong, you will make all the plants grow again. Uh, of course. Listen, Nanny, when we get to Planet Bong, I may need a little bit of help. Yes, I am the fairy helper, and I already helped you mend the flying saucer. Yes, this might be a bit bigger. How bigger? Big! We are here, Planet Bong. Planet Bong is all sand and hot. The perfect holiday planet. <gasps> We're going into the ground. I am home again and I have brought Smarty Pants to save our planet. The great leader of Planet Bong is here to celebrate this special meeting of peoples. Hello! He's tiny! Yes, on Planet Bong, we get smaller as we get older. Hello! Who said that? <laughs> He's down there, Daddy. Oh, hello! Hello! Say hello, everybody. The great leader is very old. It is a fantastic honour for you to meet him. Say hello, Gaston. Hello! <gasps> Gaston's eaten the great leader! Uh. Naughty Gaston, spit the great leader out! <coughs> Terribly sorry, he's not really house-trained. Uh, yes. <laughs> As our special guests, we will now welcome you with a song. What a horrible noise! When are they going to start playing the tune? This is our national anthem. And delightful it is too. Cyrus, why do you live underground? Once, Planet Bong was covered in plants. Everywhere was green and beautiful, and the people were happy. Then the plants began to die out. It became too hot to live on the surface, so we moved underground. Everyone lives underground? Yes, even the animals. Animals? <coughs> Whoa! Ah, an alien monster! Don't worry, it is just a flobber gurgle twat. Splog. It is a pet. <laughs> oh, the flubber gurgle thwat splog is so cute. <laughs> Mummy, can we take the flubber gurgle thwat splog back home with us, please? I think it is much happier living here, darling. Oh. Um, when do we go to the beach? Now, we will take the lift. Lovely big beach. But where's the sea? There is no sea. So where can we swim? Nowhere. There is no water. Not for swimming, not for drinking, not for anything. Nothing but sand. Yes, just sand and sand and sand and sand and sand. Yes, Planet Bong is sand and sand and sand. Planet Bong is a door. So, this 
isn't a holiday. No, it's a rescue mission, Your Majesty. Yes! Smarty Pants is here to save us. Please, Smarty Pants, make the plants grow. Uh, yes. I've given this problem a lot of thought, and I believe that I, Smarty Pants, have the answer. Good. So, without further ado, I will hand over to my fairy helper. Me? Yes. Just magic the plants up, would you? Oh, right. It is very excellent. Thank you. My pleasure. Now, please do the rest of the planet. What? The whole planet? Yes. But I'm Nanny Plum, not an interplanetary terraforming bioengineer. Do you mean this is it? Yes. Plants aren't easy to do. Lots of fiddly bits. Oh. So, Smarty Pants, you cannot save us after all? Uh, well, no. Thank you for trying. So, Planet Plum will never again have lots of plants and be beautiful once more? No. Wait a minute. Plants need water to grow. Yes. And if you had lots of water, you could have lots of plants. Yes. So, we just need to make it rain. I can do that. Rain's much easier to make than plants. It's just water. Then, please, make it rain. Magic wand on Planet Bong. Make it rain loud and strong. Nothing is happening. Did the magic work? Yes, it worked. Look up. Clouds. Yes, and lots of them. And clouds mean... Rain! <laughs> it's raining! The plants are coming back. Yay! Gosh, they're growing so fast. Yes, they needed water. The flowers... Look so pretty and smell so lovely. It's an alien paradise. Thank you so much. You have saved Planet Bong. It's all so lovely. An innocent, unspoiled world of nature, gentle and beautiful in its loveliness. Yes. What's happening? We are starting up our factories again. Are they supposed to make all that smoke? Yes, they always do that. How lovely. And now you can have your holiday. Uh, you know what? I think we'll just go home. Very well. I will take you home. <laughs> Next stop, Planet. You are home. Thank you again, Smarty Pants. Oh, it was nothing. For you, maybe. I magicked up a whole planet's worth of rain. To honour our alien guests, the elf band will now play a tune. Uh, are you sure that's a good idea? Oompa, oompa. Ah, what beautiful music! Is this your national anthem? Ah, uh, who knows? It could be. It is wonderful. 